Jordan Els here for Local MMA. Today I'm joined by Brandon Moreno, who fights at UFC 256 for the flyweight title. How are you doing today? Man, thank you. Thank you for your time, brother. No worries. So what, what have you been up to today? I'm, I'm sure you're back straight in camp, working hard ahead of this fight. Man, for this fight, I feel amazing, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a weird, but, but at the same time, it's a special moment because I had my last fight uh, one week ago. Figueredo, too, he defended his title. So we, we don't have, like, any injuries in the fight. We are ready to fight, and, and UFC g give us the, the opportunity to fight in December 12th, and we are ready. Yeah, as you said, December 12th, you don't have a lot of time to prepare. So how does camp work for you? How does it look for you right now? Are you in, in a full camp or are you just taking over, staying sharp? I mean, obviously, it's a, dif a different kind of uh, training camp, you know? But I'm, I'm trying to be very smart because I have the, tra the last training camp on me, you know? I'm in shape. I have the cardio, you know? I'm 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 very sharp. I feel really really sharp right now. My last fight again. I don't have any injuries. You know the fight over in the first round. So I, the same for Figueiredo. So for me, it's just try to keep uh, my weight. You know, try to keep my weight. Stay just in shape. Make some kind of game plan for Figueiredo. I saw his last fight. So I imagine what happened in that in that in my in the in my fight between us. So, and that's it. Just stay sharp for the fight. Yeah, and you mentioned in your last fight, a uh, first round TKO victory against Brandon Royval. Before that fight, it looked like you might be getting the title shot, you know, straight away at 255, and, and the UFC kind of passed up on you. I've seen a few quotes saying you weren't really happy with that. How did the UFC explain to you as to why Perez got the shot over you? Uh... They give me some explanation about about why uh, they put Alex Perez for the title shot first than me. You know, I to be honest, I think I deserve first the title shot even before than uh, Cody Garbrandt. But I understand, you know, the company right now try, is trying to sell pay per views. Uh, Cody Garbrandt has the name; he's a former champ, so maybe he can make something for the company. But I don't know what happened with Alex Perez, but, but was, I was very mad, very angry that in, in, when they called me and say me and say me that. But after that, I tried to stay very focused on Brandon Royal because he looks impressive in, in his first appearance in the company, you know? And Alex Perez uh, deserved the, 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 the fight for the title too, because he, he has a really good uh, performance in the UFC. So it was fine for me. And I took the, I took the fight against Ronald Rebel very serious, like an experience. I beat him. So now I'm, I'm the number one contender. And, and, I try, and I will try to prove it. That, to prove it. Yeah, so as you said, you took Brandon Royval really seriously and we could see that on fight night. So what was you expecting from him going into that fight and um, how was it different on the actual night? Um, um, I saw his last fight against Kai Karafran. He's aggressive. He, he tried to throw pun crazy punches, you know. Uh, he, he loved the, the spinning elbows too much. So... With the, all that information, we try to, to do a really good game plan. Uh, he's a SOPA. That is a little bit weird because always trying to fight against a SOPA guy is, is weird. But we, we, I know how to beat that kind of guys. So I try to put pressure on, on the first of the round, uh, close, the, close the distance with him when he throws the, the spinning elbow, go to the ground. I know his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is amazing, but the people forget uh, my career before this per my last performance. You know, right now I'm try to throw more exchange in my feet, but before that my career was like submissions everywhere. So my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is always always there, always there. Sorry, and I proved it that night. 
Yeah, and on the night, he, he, he got an injury and you was relentless going for the finish and, you know, got it with one second left in the round. When, when you were laying down the ground, the pound on him, did you realise he was hurt? He'd hurt his shoulder at that point. I, I feel something, you know. Obviously, something happened with his shoulder. But uh, the people asked me about that and the end of the fight doesn't want like I, like I wanted. But before the injury, I was dominating the fight, and I'm very focused on that. You know, I'm very focused on, on my work before the injury. Yeah, do you feel like people are trying to downplay your win, you know, because of that injury? Uh, maybe some people, but the, the, I think the, the people in general recognize, recognize uh, my work, you know, before the, before the, the injury, you know, throw a throw the ball down, control the position on, on my feet, throw the better punches, and, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it was a fantastic fight, and you look great in it. I'm sure we'll see us both rematch at some point. So straight on from that, you get offered a title shot. So is that as soon as you get out the cage? Are they speaking to you about that, or how does that type of process work? was crazy uh, and was uh, very funny because I finished the fight, I went, you know, to do some interviews and that stuff. Then I grab, I, I went to, to the hotel and, and grab all my stuff. I went to the house of my manager. I saw the fight uh, again, between Figueredo and Alex Perez. And after that, maybe 10 minutes after, uh, my, uh, my manager uh, take the, the, the phone, had the matchmaker in the, in the phone and, and tell me, hey, you are ready to fight against Figueiredo in three in three weeks? Obviously, it was very strange, you know. I talked with my head coach before, and but he said me like, "Hey, brother, you are ready. You are ready to shock the world. You are healthy. You are in you are in shape right now. The the last fight finished very fast. So, man, you are ready to take this opportunity, and we do it together." Yeah. So, the from the moment of them asking you, "Do you want this fight?" to the um, to you actually saying, yeah, you know, sign the contract. How long was that? Well, well maybe two days. When I, they give me the contract, then two days maybe. And it's not ideal circumstances. Um, it, was there ever any talk about, you know, potentially you, do, you doing this fight in the early stages of next year or pushing it back a few months? Or was it this date or, or nothing really? I mean, obviously, it's better with a with a nice training camp, no? A specific training camp. And, you know, it's, it's try to watch his fights again, make a good a, a strategy against Figueredo. But, man, it is what it is, and I'm ready, you know? It's, a, it's about my life. It's about my destiny. I think it's a kind of mystical moment because... You know, everything is so fast, but I think it's, it's destiny. It's just destiny. Yeah, and not only are you you're getting a title shot, your chance of destiny, as you just said, it's the it's headline the last pay per view of 2020. So you must be delighted about that as well. Um, sorry again. Um, so not only are you getting a title shot, you're also headlining the the last pay per view yeah. event of the of the year. So I'm just saying, you mu you must be de delighted to get that position as well. Yes, brother. I mean, I'm so excited, you know. Uh, and for example, I I, I love uh, uh, Kukui Ferguson. Um, he's the co-main event. I'm the main event of this of that card. Uh, obviously, it's too much responsibility on my shoulders. But at the same time, I'm working too much for this opportunity to change my life. Uh, it's a main event of in a pay-per-view. I'm excited. And just moving on to your opponent, it's Devison uh, Figueredo. He's looked sensational in 2020. What did you make of his, his performance, his first title defense against Alex Perez? No, nah, he, he looks good, you know, with, with good reaction to, for taking the, uh, the guillotine um, and, take, and take the neck of Alex Perez. But, man, I, I don't feel impressed by his performance, no, you know, everybody is saying uh, Figueiredo is the next. Demetrius Johnson is the next superstar of the company. He's powerful. He's fast. 
man, I don't think so. I I I I know I can beat this guy. I know I can I can change my life. And if I can, just let me try. Just let me try. Let me make my my work uh, that night, and and we'll see. Yeah. And what did you make of Alex Perez's performance? Obviously, it was it was really quick finish, and Figueiredo made it look easy. And what, what did you make of Alex Perez on the night? Man, before the finish. I think the work of Alex Perez was good, you know, trying to keep the distance with the kicks, with the body kicks, throw good punches, almost take uh, Figueiredo down, but Figueiredo grabbed the cage. He grabbed the cage uh, and they and then throw the 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 ankle lock. Um, I don't know, brother. I don't. I don't feel impressed by Figueiredo. I think uh, Alex Perez. Uh, make a mistake, you know, in the transition, because uh, uh, he need to move to do on uh, as other some other other move. But good reaction, good good for Figueiredo, you know, good one for him. And ahead of this fight, Figueiredo's kind of said he he's got a personal problem with you, and um, relating to you calling him out a few years ago. I just want to get your thoughts on that. Man, he's very emotional, you know. He's angry for that, just for that. Man, he needs to understand he's the champion and other guys won his belt, you know? He's angry just for that, and that's it. <laughs> and how do you feel towards him? Is it all cool from your side? No, man, obviously no. I don't feel nothing bad against Figueiredo, you know? I want to beat him, and I know I can do it because he's the champion, but it's not for him. It's for the belt. It's, it's, to, it's for my, my glory, my, my own glory. And for him, it's personal, not for me, you know. It's just because I want to be the next flyweight champion in the world. And on the night, how do you get this done? What's your game plan? What's your route to victory? And how do you see this fight going down? Um, I need to be very smart, obviously, because I'm, I know he's powerful, no? He's he has power in his right hand, but he's, I can beat him, you know. He lost before against Formiga, and I, and I beat Formiga, you know, by decision, very well, you know, a unanimous decision. And he lost, he lost against him, against Formiga. So I need to be very smart because I know he can throw punches. He, he can knock, knock me out, but I think I'm more technical than him, you know. He, he throw hard punches, but I'm more technical than him, and I see that happen in the fight. And in terms of his strong suits and how he might get the a win or how it could go wrong for you, is that power the main thing you're looking out for and looking to avoid? Yes, I mean I, the most important thing here is his power in his right hand. You know, both hands, but. The important is the right hand. So I need to stay focused on that. Never lose my eye of, of, of Figueiredo, you know. Stay around the, the, the octagon, uh, moving really fast. And, and that's it, you know. At the end of the day, you make an, a game plan for somebody. And another, another crazy thing happen in the fight, and you need to change the game plan in that moment. So... This train, this kind of training camp was fast, just three weeks. So, with I, I see, I saw his last fight, um, and try to make a, a good game plan, um, and that's it, you know. And on the night, do you think the weight might have um, a factor? The cut, obviously, he's a, he's a big guy. He's had troubles at, at making one two five before. Um, do you think that might impact him having to cut weight three weeks? between each other I'm trying to don't stay focused on that but I know can be a problem for him because he made weight last week and try and try to make weight in just three in just three weeks again for a guy who is really big for for the division can be a problem for him I'm trying to stay focused on me but Maybe can happen with with his weight, so I I will be prepared for that.
And how do you feel about having to cut weight so, so soon after? Are you comfortable making that limit? I, I'm very light right now. Actually, I'm like like 11 pounds over right now. In my last cut weight, in this moment, I was in like 142, something like that. So I, after after my last fight against Roy Ball, um, I eat bad food like just the Sunday. Uh, Saturday in the night and the Sunday, but immediately next Monday I start my diet again. So right now I'm very light. Okay, and just before we move on from there, you mentioned Juicy Formiga before. I just want to get your thoughts on his departure from the UFC. It seemed pretty harsh from our side of things. He's still one of the best in the world. What did you make of it as a former opponent? <sighs> Man, it's a it's a it's a crazy moment. Uh, for the company right now, you know, they have, for example, they have too much uh, ta- talent coming from the from the contender series. They give too much contracts, so they need to take off another guys. Uh, for Miga, lost his last three fights, you know, Benavides, me, and Alex Perez. He he put his uh, his body in a bad position. In the company, I don't know. I, I know he has the necessary name to sign with another big promotion, you know, like Bellator or PFL or something like that. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be fine. Uh, from one really great fighter to another, Henry Cejudo, has been he's been talking ahead of this fight between you and and Figueredo. He, he's just claiming that Figueredo is babysitting his, his belt. He, he's hinting at a comeback, but he also <laughs> thinks you're the man to beat. Figueredo. So, what do you make of Henry as, as a champion, his prediction of you winning and potentially fighting him in the future? Damn, I, I feel happy. I mean, I, I, tr- I trained uh, before with Henry Cejudo in 2016. I helped uh, him for the, for the first fight against Demetri Johnson. He lost that fight, but I, I, helped, uh, I helped him for, for in, this, in that training camp. Um, I'm you know, he's the old friend. He, uh, he's in his character, character like triple C, and, and and I'm just thankful for the good vibes from from Henry. <laughs> Is he someone you you kind of eye as um, if you pick up this belt as a first defense in in the early part of 2020, to 21, sorry. <laughs> Man, I'm you say if I'm the champion, I need to beat everybody. I'm beating everybody right now, so more like a champion, you know. If I I'm the champion, I need to beat everybody. If Henry Cejudo want to come back and and fight in the flyweight division, it's fine for me, you know. Brilliant. Well, thanks for your time today. I wish you really good luck with the rest of camp and fight nights. Can't wait to watch you. Man, thank you so much for the for your time, brother.